Welcome back for another video and today I'm going to be going over decoy spreads for ducks and geese in a field. If you guys didn't know, I love hunting ducks and geese in fields and there's a few different decoy spreads that you can do when you're in a field. And I like decoy spreads in fields better than on water because you have a little bit more versatility because you have the space that's behind you instead of like sitting on the bank of the water, you have to just have everything in front. In a field, you can have stuff behind you and you can make the spread a little bit bigger and it's just, field hunting, it's just a whole different ball game than on water. Let's go over my favorite way and the simplest way to set up for ducks and geese in a field. What we need to do first is set the blinds. So we're gonna set the blinds right here, you know, one, two, three, four guys hunting. We got the wind at our back, right? So the wind right there. Blinds are set, the wind is at our back, and what we're gonna do now is set the decoys. Uh, when you're in a field, always make sure you set the blinds first, get them all brushed in and looking good, and then set your decoys. It's gonna be a lot easier. What I'm gonna be talking about here is honker decoys because I am a firm believer that honker decoys are just as good of a duck decoy in a field. Um, people can argue with me on that, but I've killed ducks with mojos and honker decoys just as much as I've killed ducks with duck decoys mixed in with the honker decoys. I'm gonna show you guys my favorite decoy spread to do with the horseshoe. We're gonna just set our decoys out right here and make it, you know, a little haphazard. They're feeding, they're having a good time. And we're gonna just wrap this horseshoe, get this basic shape done. Once we get that basic shape done, then we can add a little bit more to the spread. So we got our basic horseshoe shape here. And what we're gonna do now is something that I like to do is really put a concentration of the decoys around the blinds. Putting the decoys around the blind really kind of helps break up the outline of those and you can kind of use the decoys to hide the blinds. So when I'm doing a horseshoe like this, I like to just have it just like this, have decoys surrounding the blinds, wrap it up over here and there we go. We got our basic horseshoe, but we're not done yet. What I like to do now is add just a couple of honkers right there, maybe three. We call those our big daddies, and they're walking in to the spread. They're like geese that just landed, and they're walking into the hard feed. That is your basic horseshoe spread when we're talking ducks and geese in a field. But if you're wanting to hunt ducks, you really need some mojos in the field. And what I like to do there is maybe add a mojo right here, a mojo you can put mojos out in the middle, but you know sometimes they can get in the way of shooting and stuff. So we generally put our mojos off to the side, but you can definitely just slap mojos right in the middle, right here. So there you go. There's some options for you. Most of the time when you're hunting in a field, ducks will land on the mojos. Just in my experience, if you guys have experienced something different, leave it in the comments. But most of the time in a field, ducks are going to land on the mojos. So I like to just put them right in the middle, you know, just kind of this area right here. Maybe not that high up. We'll go. This, what I'm coloring in here is kind of your area where I would personally put a mojo, but you can also put them back in here some more if you want. So that is kind of the basic outline, wind at your back, horseshoe in a field situation. You got your goose decoys, if you got duck decoys, mix them in. But what I like to do with duck decoys, if I'm really targeting ducks and not geese, I'm going to put the duck decoys kind of in this colored area here too. But I also like to mix them in with the honkers, but I like to put a large concentration of them in that middle of the pocket so the ducks will just land right there. Let's say you're in a field with almost no cover. It's gonna be impossible to hide in the field. So you have to hunt a grass strip or a fence line. So we're gonna set up our blinds on that fence line or that grass strip. And here's the edge of that grass strip. And so what we're gonna do is do that basic horseshoe shape like we did earlier with the wind at our back. But we're gonna be hunting a crosswind. So the wind is gonna be coming across us like that. When I'm doing the horseshoe as a crosswind, I like to stretch the decoys out a little farther on the side nearest to me. And we're gonna stretch those out, bring it along here, bring it along here, you know, fill those in right there with some decoys. And decoy numbers, just work with what you got. That's all I can really tell you to do. We're gonna just bring that horseshoe all the way around here and do that, do that. So we're gonna bring it in like that. And it's a little tighter than I would do, but you get the idea. So I like to kind of put a good number of them here, a really good number of them right in here on the edge here and we're gonna just fill this backside out just like this a 
and that's gonna get filled in. As for mojos, I would put them right here, just like that. You could even push the back of this pocket here up a little bit because they're blind in right there. So bang, bang, you got shooting lanes right there. Mojos will be right here. This is all decoys. And then you're shooting there. This is just kind of a rough picture for you guys and I hope you see kind of what I'm trying to get at here. Leave that pocket right there for the ducks and geese to land in all day, every day. It's gonna do it. So that's the horseshoe. The J is very similar to that. Just cut one end off and you got your J. Uh, another spread that I like to do is the W. And I know I went over this in my over water video, but it's a little bit different for a field. So we got our blind set. We're gonna have the wind at our back. So the wind's coming up right here. So what I like to do is make a W shape. We're gonna just get the rough outline here. And I like to mark it out about 40 yards out right there, tips of the spread. I keep forgetting to tell you guys that, but tips of the spread, we walk it out 40 yards, put a decoy there, put a decoy there. That's our marks for 40 yards. So we're gonna just bring that, wrap it up, wrap it up, get that shape, and then we're gonna bring the decoys across the front, and then we're gonna make that W shape. You can make it as long as you want, or you can even make it just a stubby little W. Um, in Colorado, uh, when we got that 14 man limit, we were running a W, it was like a weird day, the wind was wrong, we set up wrong for it, but we were running snows on this side, darks on this side, and the wind was basically coming in like that. And we shot a 14 man limit, uh, I don't know how, they would just like s swoop around, come in over the top, really weird, we, we didn't set up quite right for that, but we did run a W that day. So we got the shape done, what we're going to do now is just fill it out. And I like to run decoys around the blinds to break that up, hide them up. And then we're going to just keep bringing those decoys back and make this look like where the party is. The ducks and geese will want to be in that party. So we're going to just do that right there, even wrap this out some more. And then there you go. There's, there's kind of a horseshoe spread or a... There's your W spread. You can just kind of tweak it however you want it, but that's pretty much the basic gist of it. And the reason why you do a W spread is it gives the ducks and geese two different options. They can land in here or they can land in here. And so that just kind of, sometimes that makes a little bit of a difference for the ducks if the horseshoe isn't doing it. And it's really easy to go from a horseshoe to a W. You just grab some decoys, throw them out in the middle, and you do that. So wind at your back, ducks will come in, boom. Boom, geese too. And with your mojos right here, you can even bring them out here if you want. You can even slap one right in the middle there. And there you go, that's your W spread for a field. You can also run a W spread as a crosswind if you want, you just flip it sideways. Um, not necessarily my favorite thing to do, I just like to maybe put just a family group in the middle and that generally works pretty well if you're just running a horseshoe, put a couple family groups in the middle. and the birds will dig that. The last spread that I like to do in a field is pods. Um, generally, don't do it a whole lot, but sometimes it helps to do that. You can even, it's basically family groups. So earlier in the season, family groups work really well. And what you're gonna do is get your blind set. You can have a crosswind or um, wind at your back. It really doesn't matter. Just don't have the wind at your face. You can just alter this however you want. But with the wind being at our back here, what we're gonna do is put our decoys in pods. So we're gonna family group these suckers, honkers right here. We got about five of those guys, and we're gonna bring some more down here. And I like to maybe put a few more around the blinds just so then they hide and, uh, you know, breaks up the outline of the blind. But if you're covered in real good, shouldn't be a problem. It's just kinda a little bit of an extra thing I like to do. We'll put another group over here. We'll put another group right here. Kinda keeping a horseshoe shape a little bit. Maybe two right there, put some out here. They're just scattered. I've seen fields where the, the ducks and geese are just kinda, you know, there's some here, there's some here, some here. They're just kinda all over the place. Really nothing, no particular shape. So you can even run some more pods out behind your blinds. And I actually do recommend doing this. And then sometimes we've, sometimes we've put another group of like 12 decoys about 20 yards behind the blind. Just in case they want to land on that, we can get them as they come over. So we'll keep doing that, groups. And you get that general shape to where, you know, they'll want to land kind of in this area, 
but it also makes them feel a little more comfortable to have an exit strategy where they can come out and not fly over anything and go out that way. And they could land here, they could land here, they could land here, here, even here, which I really don't like it when they do that, but sometimes they do. And if you have a, a few decoys behind the blinds here, they could even land right there. As for mojos, what I like to do is put a couple mojos over off to the sides, like I've said before, and you can even put some in front of the blinds or behind the blinds and get that attention the ducks and they're going to land. Um, you can even just slap one mojo right out in the middle. It really doesn't matter. So that's pretty much it. Remember where the wind is coming from. You want to have the wind at your back or to your side. Uh, those are the two best scenarios where you can be in. Ducks will always land going into the wind. So keep that in mind when you're setting your decoys. So we went over the U, went, went over the W, we went kind of over the J a little bit. Pretty simple to make that instead of a horseshoe. And then we also did the pods. Pretty simple. And, you know, these, these are really the go-to spreads for me. Um, you know, just work with the amount of decoys that you have. If you only have three dozen goose decoys, work with it. You'll be able to kill birds, I promise. Just get in the right spot. If you're in the right spot, then you will be able to kill birds and it's going to be a lot easier. That is all I've got for you guys today. Uh, I hope you guys learned something about some decoy spreads in the field. You can always switch things up. Try different things. If the geese and ducks are not liking something, they're landing short, move the decoys, move your blinds, do something. Make something a little bit different to see if the ducks and geese want it a little bit more. Sometimes it's just a little adjustment going from like a U to just running a W or just slapping a couple family groups out there. That really makes a difference, and I don't really know why it does. It's just something, just a little bit of confidence that they get out of those decoys being moved um, and being placed like that. It makes them feel a little bit more comfortable. Don't be afraid to change things up. That is like one of the biggest things I can tell you. I've been in hunts sometimes where we switch the decoys around like six times because the birds just don't want to do it or we're having to switch because of wind. Uh, it's just there's a lot of stuff going on and just try your best to see what the birds want. It's kind of like bass fishing. You flip a jig all day, maybe you catch two fish. If you switched up to a spinner bait, then you would have caught six. It's just figuring out what, what the birds want and give that to them. Go ahead and follow me on my social media. I got Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook. Follow me on there. Stay up to date with what's going on. But that is all we got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you on the next one.